Eternal God and our Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. Father, we thank you that in all things your word says they are to give thanks. And here we are giving thanks, O oh God, for the life of your servant whom you have blessed us with. He has gone on before us, but we are still saying thanks, God, because there are some examples of life that he has impacted while he was here. So we stand saying thank you as we will be celebrating all that he has done and the impact that he has on many lives, oh God, as we'll be going through the remembrance and we'll be going through so much about him. But I pray, God, I give you thanks that in the midst of all that he did for others, he did something for himself when he accepted you. So Lord, we thank you for the light that you allow it to shine. And we thank you, mighty God, that on that day, the Lord, when you call, he will answer. Lord, as we commence today's service, we pray against incidents and accidents. We pray, God Almighty, for your perfect will to be done. We pray, God Almighty, that you will lead and that we will follow. Have your way in us and through us, O oh God, as we bow our hearts to thee and say thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I will ask one of my deaconess to come as she will be moderating for us today in the person of Sister Stewart from the Mount Stewart New Testament Church. So we will be going into some praise and worship at this time, and then we continue. And then shall we worship the Lord? Come on, man, let us give God some praise this morning. We wake us up this morning. Who are us in our right mind? This morning is only one person in the desert. We are all alive and well this morning. So it is for us to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise that due unto his name, knowing that we could be here. But praise God, we are here to lift up the name of Jesus and to give him glory. Amen. Amen. Shall we worship the Lord? Amen. Can we stand together? Praise God. The psalmist said we should enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Hallelujah. For he alone is worthy to worship and
corner with his guitar. Hallelujah to God. And I'm sure if he was alive, he would be telling somebody to this morning, leave Babylon and come. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. So I just want to encourage those who have not yet accepted Christ as their Savior and Lord. Leave Babylon. Come that you may see Brother Bernard some of these wonderful days. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. At this time we will be under the open Him. We're going to stand together. Great is thy faithfulness. Can we all stand at this time?
Hallelujah. Have a worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God. You may be seated. Now we'll be going straight away into our program. And we'll be going just as follows. So at this time we'll have a selection by Dana Lindo Grandson, followed with the first lesson by Sabrina Aisha. Great granddaughter. So you will come in that. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. God is good. All the time. Brother Herbie Bernard, Thanksgiving service. He has lived a gigantic cat of one plus 94 years. How, much, how many of us gonna live for so long? To grace and mercy. I hope this song will be a blessing to us all. This plane I'm riding. They say he's leaving for a place where he will never die. And the pilot will be in Jesus to that man somewhere up in the sky.
morning, everyone. The first lesson will be taken from 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verses 49 through to 58. 49, sorry. And as we have borrowed the image of the earth, we shall also bear the image of the heavens. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I shall eat a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is love. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the dead, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. But be thanks to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 58 and last. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as we know that your labor is in vain in the Lord. This is a portion of God's only word. Thanks be to God. Uh, the third one, Matthew New Testament, the Montego Bay New Testament Church will be coming in that. Good afternoon, everyone. So we're going to be And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride and went for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new, and he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. And seventh and last, He that overcometh shall inherit all things and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Thank you. Welcome, Pulgas, for church here.
worship the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, man. Come on, can we stand for a cheer? We sit to relax in the house of the Lord. Come on. We are in the house of the Lord, and His name is worthy to be praised. We are in a Thanksgiving service, but that doesn't mean that we can't give God some praise. Shall we worship the Lord? Come on, lift up your hand and worship the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Redeem when my burden of sin was high. Redeem when my soul condemned. Jesus Christ. 
I need hold on, hold on to the old rugged cross, for someday Jesus will come. Hallelujah. That was his time for the word. And so the next voice you will be hearing is the voice of Reverend Samantha Blake Reed. And she will be coming to deliver the word. Okay, I'm sorry. I understand that Brother Bernard's sister is here. And I'm going to give her the privilege to come along at this time. As you can see, she is not well, so I'm deputizing for her. Remembrance for Herbert Bernard. We are gathered here today in the memory of my brother, Herbert Bernard, so that together we may acknowledge and share both our joy in the gift that his life was to us and the pain that his passing brings. In sharing the joy and the pain together today, may we lessen the pain and remember more clearly the joy. As a child, I remember him going on the farm work. He was much older than I was at the time, so I call him Brother Herbie. My fondest memory of him were when we used to play in the yard but as soon as evening comes, he would show up. And of course, all of the boys had to find their own homes. And I was timely instructed to go inside now. Back in the days, there was no electricity. So we used our lamps, which were pale at times. On several occasions, when he came to visit my dad, may his soul rest in peace, of course. Dad would share our dinner, and I just never learned. My younger sister, darling, knew she should cover her plate with her hands, but I didn't. So when I am ready to eat my meat, there was none. <laughs> my father often says, Herbie, why don't you leave the pity that meat? But I was always the victim. He was a hard worker, a farmer most of his days, even when he was a postman for the village. Thus he got the name Posey. I remember my many trips to the country to look for him. Those memories never leave me. I will leave with a bunch of bananas, canes, and whatever he could find. Miss Sister, you can't look for me, is what I often hear. He would pack trips. He would take trips into Montego Bay to look for me when I am sick. So when I heard he was not well and was in the hospital, I had to visit him. He recognized me immediately. And as usual, I heard, Sister Joyce, you home? I felt so much compassion for him then. He told me that they cut off his toe, but he did not feel it. I fed him his soup until he told me he wants no more. I prayed with him and bid him well. I knew he would transition soon, so I cherished the moment. He lived a full life. I cried, knowing that I will never be able to see him again. But as I look back and remember the life that he had, I know he is smiling down at us with the brightest smile that he can give, knowing we remember him. The pain of his death is not something that can go away with just sincere condolences or a bunch of flowers. What makes it bearable is knowing that we are gathered here today because of the wonderful memories he left us. You all came here and shared hours of your day because he was a loving father, a supportive grandfather, 
a loyal neighbor and husband, a faithful uncle, and an amazing friend. He left us a part of him that neither time nor even his death can ever take away. As I look into the crowd of people, mourning for him, of course, I find comfort in knowing that all of you loved my brother. I find peace in knowing that he touched your life and that you also touch his heart at some point in his life. I find happiness in knowing that he will live on in all our memories. He may not have lived a perfect life, but he lived a good one. One that we will forever cherish and will continue to remember. I know my brother would hate to see us crying for him. He would want to cling, he would want us to cling to the beautiful memories and forgive ourselves for whatever regrets we have. He would like us to be strong through the darkest days ahead. That is what he always does. I can never deny the pain that I carry, but I would like us to remember him as a blessing and a lesson, and as a lesson. I want to treasure the life he shared with us over the pain that his death has brought to us. It is written, it is appointed for man to die once, but after this, judgment. But this we pray, that mercy reigns over judgment. We wish you farewell in your journey to eternity, Herbie. You will never be forgotten. Rest in eternal peace, dear brother. You will live on forever in our hearts. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know, even though most of us don't know Brother Bernard as Irving, we call him Pussy. He used to carry the mails. Thank you, sister, for your tribute of your brother. Amen. Can you bow your head with me at this time? Holy Father and our God, Lord, we want to exalt you for this wonderful occasion, God. It's with mixed feeling, but we thank you to know that your son has lived a life that others were so respected of. And now, Father God, your word is about to come forth. We pray, God, that you will cover your servant right now under your blood. I pray that you will use her as an oracle of thine. Mighty God, I pray that you will speak to her and speak through her. And that your word will reach some high God who is thirsty, who is hungry to hear your word. Mighty God, we declare today that someone will come to know you as Savior and Lord through your word as we give you honor. So we ask that you will over your daughter right now. Speak and use her to your honor and to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I present to you Pastor Samantha Blake in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Sister Stuart. And my condolences again to the family. I know it is not easy. I buried my aunt, but I don't know what it is to bury a father, a brother, our uncle. But I know the pain still lingers. So heartfelt condolences to you on behalf of my family and the church family. Turn your Bibles with me as I will be looking at the passage that the Lord has given me to share with you this afternoon. It is found in Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 to 10, that is where I'll be looking. It says, Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived, God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap. For he that soweth 
to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Tenth and last. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. This is a reading of a portion of God's word. We honor it by saying, Amen. Thank you, Sister Sewell, for praying. And we ask the Lord to add his blessings to his word at this time. When I ask the Lord, what should I say to your people today? Because so many hear the words and oftentimes when we are at the funeral service, the uh, time for the preaching, they tend to well be on the outside, but I give God thanks to be that you are on the inside. Because the Lord wants to speak to us. I'm not going to say that the Lord wants to speak to you. The Lord wants to speak to us. Because we are in this together. The Lord gave me a theme from this passage. It says, be conscious of the seed you sow. Be conscious of the seed you sow. You see, from we arrive in this earth, we begin to sow seed. And we have to be conscious of the seed that we sow. Because whatever seed you sow, that you shall also reap. As an individual, my brothers and sisters, it is quite okay to care for oneself. However, we are living in a society where some persons become so self-centered that they neglect, they neglect the very command of God. The Apostle Paul had some to deal with in the church over there in Galatia. He had some to deal with in the community. And we do have some to deal with in our very society where we become so self-centered and selfish that we forget those who are around us. Some of us have gone so far even to forget those who have imparted unto us. But the Lord allow me to come to you this afternoon to remind us of our duty. Of the Apostle Paul here teaches them to be tender and affectionate towards one another and to those who had fallen into sin and to bear each other's burden. He warns them against self-deception because whatever man saw, he shall reap the very same thing. Paul believed that individuals must do good to others. If there's a time in our society where people are oh God Almighty, you wonder where the goodness of people is, it's now where everybody become me, myself, and I. I have no time for anybody else. But if you understand, even the very government are doing the same thing, 300% increase while the poor is there suffering. So they become so selfish. Everybody is deteriorating. Nobody is remembering anybody who are in need. Our oh, young sometimes forget the elderly. That thing that look, you live your life already. It's time to live mine. So I go about my business. But Paul is saying to us today that we have to remember to do good. I remember visiting with my mama. I take her to a specialist in Montego Bay. And when I look the clinic there are so many elders but when you look for the, the young people to come to help them they are there on their own we are living in a society where people become selfish it doesn't matter how much you done for them in life when they think they arrive they become selfish don't business with you anymore but Paul here is saying uh, we have to be conscious of the seed that we sow. For whatever seed you sow, that you shall also reap. I remember 
sitting beside an old lady and the lady was there she, she, she's blind in both eyes and when she was there talking to us about our children and our grandchildren and they have arrived because she imparted to them she could not read but she ensured that her children went to school and acquired the education but then she was left alone because everybody said mama And leave her on her own. We think we arrive. Paul was speaking to the church. But he was speaking to the community. Because a community is made up of persons who are from a family. He was talking to brothers. He was talking to sisters. He was talking to, talking to fathers and grandfathers and children. He said that we are to do good to others. Paul instruct those who said to them that you need to help, you need to support those who teach you, those who help you along the way. Paul was saying to them, don't forget your elders, don't forget the person who impart life to you, don't forget the man who helped you on the road when you were down, don't forget your grandfather when he fell sick, don't forget your grandmother when they fell society where we see people decide that it is best to bring your parents to home, it is best to carry them to infirmary, not to look after them, the seed that you sow, you shall also reap. Paul was saying to them, your parents make sacrifice for you. Oh God, I don't know if my parents are going to make sacrifice for the children. Oh God, because the pain in the heart to say I leave my children behind and I have to go work in the court to ensure that they are okay but when you go through college or university and you get your big job you forget that money that my papa wanted that used to wash me in my clothes that used to drop the clear I got to send them up school you forget them when they get on the airplane Saying to them, so good seed. So good seed. Oh God Almighty. He used that, 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 that analogy or uh, whatever metaphor it is. He was saying to them, so good seed. Because guess what happened? You cannot plant corn and look for Google peas. Oh God, a Google peas you're going to get. If you need to plant Google, but if a corn you plant, a corn you're going to get. What am I talking to today? Not contributing to the life of the person who aid you in growing up to be wise as you are. The person who made the sacrifice, the man or the woman that says that I will give to you and do without our God Almighty. And you turn your back. Paul is saying unto you, you are Andros. Today, children, Disregard the command of oh God Almighty that is over there in the, in the book of Exodus that says, Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord God, we need to teach our generation again, oh God, for them to understand that it is once a man and twice a child. Oh God Almighty, as night for a day, if you don't die young, you will get to an age when you have to use the walking stick. You will get sit in the wheelchair. You will get to an age when you have to depend on somebody. Be careful of the seed that you sow. You shall also reap. All the way further, 
and saying to them for them to understand something. Because some of us, we tend to pretend, uh, oh God Almighty, even in a world that we're living in, we have so many pretenders. Uh, oh God Almighty, yes, they say, no, uh, no one then to Western Union uh, and say, I am taking care of my parents. Uh, oh God Almighty, some of them, Lord Jesus, uh, is what they don't want, they bring come. Uh, Lord Jesus, sometimes, uh, oh God Almighty, the parents are longing to see them. Uh, children 
get them off the, the gadgets. Get them off them and tell them, let them know somebody them completely will look for grandma and grandma to miserable sometimes they say they empty how one send their head. We still have a good look for them because one day you will have that send they do. Because as we get older, our bodies change. And when we have the, 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 the diabetes and, and, and the other and the medication that we take and so many toxins in our body, it will give off a scent. They did not go into the shop and buy it. Because if that was selling, nobody would purchase it. And when they complain, they say, I'm going to go and grab my head and get a cool and cup. Teach them. Allow them to understand that whatever society dictates is not what the Bible states. Amen. It's time for us to teach our children again yes. to take care of our elders. Take care of the weak among us. Do good as the word of God says. I bet if some of our children who get themselves in trouble if they had the opportunity for somebody to teach them the crime rate wouldn't be so high. Prostitution ring would not be so wide. Oh God Almighty, scamming would never come in. Because our children would know that if you take things that does not belong to you, repercussion is coming. You will sue, but you will also reap. It's time for us to teach our children again. Paul continues as he speaks about them taking care of each other. Paul went a little further for us to understand that we are to do that in taking care. But there's something that we are to do as well that we need to take care of. And that is our spiritual connection with God. We must take care of our, our, our horizontal connection with our brothers and sisters. But there is a vertical connection that we need to care about. Oh God Almighty, God are the beings when we see all our Sunday school running over. God are the beings when we see people, oh God Almighty, sending the children, hurry up because Sunday school time or Sabbath school time. Oh God Almighty, we are living in a society that is godless. And because it is godless, our people become mindless. They must be mindless because they drive so reckless. Oh, God Almighty, and sometimes you see them, they are so helpless. Not understanding that we serve a God that we need to pay attention to. But because our horizontal relationship with our brothers and sisters are not connected, we don't pay attention to the vertical. Because if you love your brothers and your sisters, you will love God. If you take care of your members of your family, whether sick or lame or whatever state they are in, you will remember God. Paul continue as Paul begin to draw comparison to the benefit obtained as they sow their seed. He says that when they sow it to the flesh, the person who indulge in sensual and other lifestyle shall have corruption as the crop. You cannot expect to lead a bad life and go to heaven. No, it can't happen. At last, you cannot expect live a life of sin and end up on the streets of gold. You cannot live a life compact with sin and expect to push those pearly gates. Oh God Almighty, Paul was saying to them that if you sow to the flesh, you shall reap corruption. That's the crop you will receive. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall reap eternal life. Come on now. I was working at a school at one point in my life. And when it's time for devotion, teacher in a staff room. And the people in the all over the place. You know when teacher attention is drawn, 
when demons come in and things start flatter and they don't know what to do. They're running up and down like chicken without men. Because when it's time for devotion and Bible reading, they sit in the staff room and the children had a jolly time. But they don't understand that one thing that that, that, that Christian lock and that the devil have and are grudging for it. Because guess what happened? It's a good thing. The devil is consistent. Oh God, man, come on, talk truth. Christians are not consistent. We go look at Jesus today, Lord God, to their funeral and some come then and go to church tomorrow. Because I have no appetite. Oh God Almighty, for the things of God. That's the world that we are living in. Our people have no appetite for the things of God. Bible study is empty. Oh God, fasting service is worse. Sunday night service no existing. But make me have ready. Everybody come to show the motion. Paul was saying if you read to the flesh, corruption is your crop. But if you read if you show to the spirit of God Almighty, life everlasting is what you will receive. Paul was saying whoever rejects the gospel and trusts only in self and tradition will reap endless disappointment and misery. But he who trusts in God and receives the gift and grace of the Holy Spirit shall reap life Amen. everlasting. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Some persons might disregard when we speak of life everlasting because they're saying nothing comes to live forever. But I want you to understand that Jesus said it best over there in St. John chapter 3 verse 15. He said, if you believe in him, you shall not perish but have everlasting life. He went on to say, oh God Almighty, in chapter 10 verse 28, he says, I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Oh, glory to God, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You see, Paul was speaking to his members and to the community members, to the children and the family members, for them to understand that they need to cater for those around them, but they need to cater for the spirit man as well. Lord God, we live in a world where everybody wants to stay forever young, and they will use all kinds of products that are are on the shelves of the, of the Chinese uh, uh, store. Uh, uh, God, some are ready to get brown, but they didn't want brown uh, because they want to look young. Uh, they are searching for forever young. Uh, but what the Bible says, uh, if you want to live forever, uh, believe on Jesus Christ the Lord. Uh, accept him as Lord and Savior. Uh, oh, glory to God, that's the only way. Uh, mighty God, The world that we're living in, we think that, look, we are okay when we arrive at our academics, when we can achieve whatever level that we want, or whatever amount that we have in a bank book, and we're living out in a house that water will not come in like the church up, because it is death or having the professional roofing, or whatever it is. So you think that you are comfortable, or you're sleeping in your pastor pedic and I think that you are all right, but I want you to understand that there is coming a day, hallelujah, when that can save you, that can help you, oh God Almighty, destruction, death and misery is coming your way if you accept not Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You might be saying that pastor, Christian dead you know. Of course, of course, because it is appointed unto man who wants to die. But after that, after that, you need to pay attention to. Oh, God.
God Almighty. That's when we shall reap. After leaving this earth, that's when eternity come into play. Where will you spend your eternity? Is it going to be with Jesus when he said, come my blessed, come into your Father everlasting kingdom? Or it is going to be at a place where torment will take place, where siblings, because I don't hear anybody come up here and talk anything bad about him, and I think everybody are telling lie. Because I've been around with him to put you up some things. But praise be to God, I hear about Brother Bernard before you start talk. Because when I come to a church, I investigate my members, because I want to know who I am assigned to. And when I listen, I learned that Brother Bernard used to come on and play a little guitar over there. Oh, God Almighty, no steal a brownie. Oh, God Almighty, think of a church in home. And he know what is happening. And he didn't just show up, but he worked in the kingdom. And he took care of those who are around him. You hear the sister talk about him taking his time to go to Montego Bay. He cared for those around him. He knew what it is to live good and do good. And he knew what it is to surrender his life to the Lord. 
I bet he did. And day will come, though he is lying down there now. But the Bible allows to understand that a day will come. Oh, glory to God. When Brother Bernard will say unto death, Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Because he died in Christ. And Christ has already gained the victory. And he will never, the death can never prevent him. On that day when the trump of God shall sound. And the dead in Christ shall rise. Oh, glory to God. Sunday morning, I was standing right here moderating service. Mighty God, I'm not pushing up anybody into heaven. But when God do something and you have an experience, you're going to talk about it. I cannot talk about you, but I can talk about me. I remember I was standing here that Sunday. I was moderating service. The person who's supposed to do their part didn't show up. And I was there worshiping God. And when I begin to sing the song, I was glad when they say unto me, let us go in the house of the Lord. When I get to the past thinking about Jerusalem, I felt my body shiver. And I said, no man, somebody is saying bye-bye. Some saint is leaving this earth. Somebody is saying my time is at hand. Somebody is saying enough of this world. I'm going home to be with my Lord. And I couldn't stop seeing And I told the members what was happening. And I, and I was there. And I was there singing and singing until finally I felt that it is finished. Yes. And the next morning I was told that Bernard, Brother Bernard chances from his life. And I said, God, you allow me to feel when he was leaving. Who is going to know when you are leaving? The pastor is going to know. His wife was here on a few persons that day when I spoke. So when I get the call, somebody said to me, Pastor, you know, surprise him because you told us. Who is going to feel it when you leave? Is anybody going to hear the heaven doors open? Is anybody going to listen as the angels welcome you home? Who? Brother Bernard made it right to God. He did it to the best of his ability. He was conscious of the seed that he saw. He ensured that the seed was good because he keep the unity and take care of those around him. And he ensured that he sowed when he was sowing his soul to the spirit. I don't know what happens in the afterlife because I've never gone there. But according to the word of God, you shall be at a place waiting on that final day. Where will you be? Where will you be? Or you will be meeting him on the banks of those beautiful river. Or you will be somewhere else. Where there is a gulf that parts you. Young people, elders, middle age. Paul is asking and he is teaching. Think in yourself. What about the seed that you have been sowing? So many of us are over 40. Are you so, from them have you been sowing good seed? What is it that you're going to reap if you should get to the point of sitting in a wheelchair? Did you forget to take care of your brothers and sisters or your mothers and fathers? I want to say, if anybody did not do good to Brother Bernard while he was alive, no amount of tears he cry will be able to roll back that. Oh, God Almighty. But I want you to understand the fact that you are alive, you have another chance. 
to make it right. Too many of us are fighting over land and fighting over homes and fighting over bamboo and fighting over this and fighting over that. It's time to live God. And I'm not going to burn out only in a cannon with him. It's time to love your brothers and sisters. It's time to care for them. Give them a cup of water when they need it. Be a road, don't be just a money grab person or a buried individual. Mama need to hear you. Papa need to hear you and see you too. Don't just show up when it's federal service. To come and show your face and buy the half a cow on the two people. Give it to them while they can smell and eat it. Sometimes they can only rub the gum over it, but give it to them. Don't scatter the roses after they are gone. Give it to them while they can smell it. This world is for you and I. For us when we leave here and go back home, look in yourself and go back and visit the seeds that you have planted. Are they good seeds? The fact that you're alive, you can start planting good work. Stand with me, everybody. I give God thanks for his word to our heart because it is reminding me just in case I step out because I still have mommy and daddy alive. I still have some old members, elders in the church and in the community that I can do good to. I still have some young people that who are in some position that I can do good to. Think about your seed that you're planting. Whose life can you impact? Ensure that you fix it. Ensure that you do it good. Because you shall reap. Whatsoever seed a man sow, that shall you also reap. If you sow to the flesh, you shall reap disappointment and corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall reap life everlasting. Is there one today who want to sow to the spirit? Who want to surrender your life to the Lord? To say, I have been sowing to the flesh so many years. It's time to sow to the spirit. Is there such a one? Is there such a one? You don't have to be from this community where you're going to come to this church. But wherever community you come from, whichever one, there's a church somewhere there that you can attend and surrender to God. All I want to do is pray with you as you surrender to Him. Oh, to Jesus I surrender all to
conscious of the sin that you saw. At this time, we'll be having a tribute from Mr. Barry Malcolm as we continue in our service. There are times in our life when we take things for granted. And one such thing is a person's contribution to life, a person's service to life. In March of this year, my sister and I, Barbara Babs, visited Posey. We went and looked for him. And we would have reflect upon life in the community of Mackfield, where we are coming from, where we are now. We talk about his work, his job as a postman. And as we reflect upon life, I came to the conclusion that in fact, many times in life, we take persons' contribution to life very simply. We see it as nothing. But before we left there, look, um, we were there, our uh, auntie was there, Chana, Hansel, they were there. But we asked some questions. And the reason for asking these questions, after we had the discussion there, we came to the conclusion that this man, his life, should be recognized. His contribution to society is one that should not go and notice. So we have asked her there and we have asked them if can recall as to when will be his next birthday. Because we decided that we want to do something special proposing. This afternoon I'm here to express my condolences and you know, give a tribute, but likewise, to the Bernard family, for the life of your father, on behalf of the community of Macfield, welcome, and by extension, Woodless Mountain, where he had served as a postman for 25 long years. Herbie Bernard Masabo Postman as we called him back then as a child growing up I as a child in the teenager in my young adulthood I look for this man for many reasons as a matter of fact I must say you know um, the area in which they live, that community. At times, persons tend to don't cast or look down on the area where they are from. We call it third world. Giving a negative impression of the community. But there are three men down there. There are no paths. Paths never. Sorry, he's gone. Oh my God, sorry about that. Man Paul and now Postman, Posey. When Man Paul died, that and about his Thanksgiving service, I had a, an um, engagement, previous engagement. So I couldn't attend the Thanksgiving service. At least I came by morning to have that with the family. 
because these people are people who I look up to. I say many times in life, we tend to admire people who are certain caliber. Yeah, we look at people who we think are educated. Um, you know, who we consider to be rich or certain background, we look to these people. But I look to these men for many little things. But I don't have money to be counted. So, Post is one man that I look to and look upon as a youngster. Because he worked at the post office here with my sister, um, Yvonne. You know, they had a work there together. She was the post assistant, Miss Tracy, and he was the postman. And I look to him and I admire him. For these reasons, there are certain attributes that I look and saw in Posey. His love, his respect, his commitment, and his dedication for his job is second to none. Speaking about hard working. When I talk about his love, his commitment, his dedication for his job. For those, well, um, the Ramble Post Office, from here to Ramble, he travels here from here to Ramble, five days per week, travel to. And thank you. But then it's not like no when person is able to ride or get a walk. He walked that distance. Five times a day. I'm talking about person who love their job. Person who respect their job. Person who are committed to their job. Person who dedicate themselves to their job. Five times per day. Five days per week. Four times per day. That's no under feet. Because the distance from here to Ramble, and you can check it if you don't know me, is six kilometers, which is approximately 3.7 something um, miles. So you have done 3.7 something miles per trip. And if you did that four times, in kilometers, 6424, he had done 24 kilometers a day. And he had done 45 something miles per day. And if we check that is as five times for the week, five times 24, you have 120 kilometers he done. And if we do it 14 times five, and you send us up near 80 miles per week. And if you take a step further to look at what you have done for the month, when I did the calculation, I'm telling you, for that 25 years of service, Post would have walked 144,000 kilometers for that 25 years. That's a man who would have loved his job, dedicated his time and service to his job. I want to say to us here this afternoon, simply as you may see it, you have contributed to the economy of Jamaica. Simple as you may see it. Simple as you may look at it. You have contributed so much to the economy of our country. I don't tell you this. Him being a postman and taking mails from Rambo to here, he'd have carried thousands of dollars that goes back into the economy. Thousands of dollars he'd have collected daily, weekly, monthly, yearly. I can recall the young son. Because up here used to be like a square, we see it as a square. That most persons would have really gathered around most of here. So it's a kind of a square. 
And up here, when it comes to, especially on a Friday, not to mention holiday season, it could be um, uh, August, more so Christmas, because everybody looks forward to the Christmas time. So here we pack with residents, with people, come to collect your evidence. Coming from overseas. So I'm saying to us here, his contribution to nation building is not on here. And it should not be looked out and noticed. Likewise, for many of us in society, would have grown up. He too would have contributed to our development. Because those returns, those money that we look forward to, set up the school. So we could go on to tertiary or whatever um, college or university to gain higher education. So his contribution to nation building is something that we recognize. So family, I want to say to you this afternoon, Bose, his service will not go on and notice. As a community, we appreciate what he has done for us as a community. Now we are living into the age, into the, into the a period in which technology may well have taken over. But it all shares with us. Posted then, he was on internet. He was our Wi Fi. I want to tell you this. Because don't believe that this email thing that they know said implement. We had email long time. Email is long time. Yes, we do. Because guess what? We have email address long time. Because I live at Mackfield District. That no, they call it. We call it. They full stop. They call it. That no, the same thing. We call it address. No, they call it email address. It's the same thing. So it's long time we have this that thing. But we call it full stop. Then call it that. Because it used to be that Wi-Fi, that internet, that connect us to the world. Because guess what? If we don't have Wi-Fi, if we don't have internet, we can't receive nor send email. If posting not working, we can't receive nor send email. So if post is down, the Wi-Fi down on the internet. So we link us to the world. So we value Posey's contribution. We recognize it. We didn't get a chance to do what we wanted to do then. And we had discussion, Mr. and I, other persons have discussion and surrounding, looking forward to celebrate and to bring him his service to nation building. Likewise, you want the communities to know that, you know, Macfield has changed somewhat. Not the same one, Macfield has changed. Dramatically, has changed the market I grew up in, totally different Macfield. And it pains my heart. As someone who born and grew up here in Macfield, to see what crime has done to Macfield, it pains my heart. So I want to see what we can do to change person's mindset, their way of thinking, to know that, hey, recognizing Posey, recognizing Master, would have let them know that, hey, you don't have to be from certain family background to be recognized or to achieve something in life. I, I admit Posey as a postman, in addition to him being a postman, yet he find time to do his farming. He did kill, had animals, he planted rice. You wonder where he find time to do all these extra things. A very hard working. And guess what? For those who know from me about no one like where he was a barber. My brother can just get I mean, I test to it. He used to be our barber. Yeah. No one said, well, I'll put it on, because it should be. We used to like, I mean, well, see, I'm not really sure, I'm not really sure. But then, we used to like it then. He used to be our barber. 
again as a pose man. Don't believe that pose as a pose man. Him carry himself in the in whole world. Trash a boy. Neat, well put together. And even if you go and fold his bag and carry it in style, and not in all of There's so much about this man that we can take from, we can learn from. I say to the family likewise, because I grew up knowing this man as a very humble man. Christian man, a Christian man. Very peaceful individual. Very humble, peaceful individual. I say to the family likewise. But don't want to get full price. But don't want to get in your heart to the Lord. I encourage you. The life that your father lived, he left great legacy here for you guys. Don't think about money and mansion. The life that he lived speaks value for the man he was. Very disciplined, humble, hardworking individual. I think Mark Free needs some more posts inside here. More posts inside here so we can understand life and know that hey, life does not really consist in the abundance of things that we possess. He was comfortable with life the way he was. Very comfortable. So we need to take a page from his book. I say to us here this afternoon, more so to the family. As you mourn his passing, as you reflect upon his passing, Jesus, before he left this earth, he knew that death would be something that we can't come to terms with, can't group it, can't understand, can't fight on. So before he left this earth, he left bright work, encouraging words here for us. I heard Pastor with in her sermon in John chapter 14, verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God. Exactly. Who believed in God? He believed in God. And as such, I ask that you likewise follow his footsteps. Follow his footsteps. Family members, on behalf of the, on behalf of the Members, the residents, the citizens of Macfield, welcome and Porter's Mountain. Accept our condolences, our condolences today as you mourn the passing of your father, your grandfather, whoever he was to you. We are here to support you, to pray with you, to give you comfort. Take comfort in these words.
So I do not look for Father's Day, Christmas, birthdays. The funny thing was, for most of my dad's life, he celebrated his birthday in September. But <laughs> upon retirement, when he sent for his stuff at the registrar, he realized that he was born in November. <laughs> and we had to be both our scarping, which we sure love. Herbert Bernal was born November 6, 1928, to Terry Serrata and Walter Bernal to Knoxville, Westmoreland, Jamaica. He was the second child of five siblings. Growing up as a child, Herbert attended school in Portland Mountain, Westmoreland, where he gained his formal education. As a young man, he learned to play the guitar and the banjo, but he told me that banjo was his favorite music, but I'm here to hear it instrument rather, and we have to hear the baby boundaries to have the baby guitar. In 1955, he met and married um, Cinderella Bernard Merman, now deceased. That union produced 14 children, 10 boys and 4 girls. He had had two other sons from previous relationships, so that would make a total of 16. So 12 boys and 4 girls. So for our soccer team, I will be the substitute. Cricket team, I will be the water boy. <laughs> so after my mom died in 1981, after a short, short illness, four years later, he met and married his now widow, Bertina Lewis, Miss Blanche, we all call her. Uh, but that union didn't produce any child. My dad tried, tried his hand at many jobs, from farmer program in the U.S., picking average tobacco, cutting sugar cane. Um, I know many, many people didn't know that my dad found rice in Mars. And I personally remember that very well. Because, because I was very small, I could go, we used to call it poetry, but it's store also on the outside. And my bigger brother would push me on a knee here, to get rice for them to cook at night. So my dad would be at church. <laughs> so he also planted sugar cane, yam, cabbage, peppers, sweet peppers, potatoes among crops. He raised pigs, goats, cattle, chicken. He even tried his hand in little carpentry you now and then. My father. Oh, no. Sorry, I'm going too fast. In 1972, he got a job with the postal agency as a mail carrier. This he continued until he retired. My father loved to look good. Always nice, shaved, and trim. And his doctors, he loves his head. And you can send the program there is great. Okay. <laughs> So Papa did not really have a favorite dish or food, so, as, far, as far as I know. But I know he loves his porridge and he loves his soup. Yeah. And I also love my porridge and my soup as well. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but growing up, growing up, it was many of us. So when my dad was buying like groceries and stuff, you would tell my dad would be open in a grocery truck, sure. Because he would buy like things such as like a bag of rice. They go back to the common crocus bag. And the other young people don't know about crocus bag. And you should buy cursing kind of oil and sugar and cornmeal and the sardine and milk powder, corned beef and among other stuff. We were very, very creative at preparing, especially my brother Alvin. Alvin would make toto, blue jars or duku, know some people call it. And he would make rice porridge, and he also make the common part of the really love with this little slush on the top. Slush, yeah. My dad was a Christian man who loved the Lord, and during my early years, working with the Lord, he supported me as a child in the church. Huge fellowship would be here. <coughs> Sorry. Rally trips, it would be there. All the young people loved and respected him. Some of you call him 
Mam Posi. But we are all amazed as a kid with my dad. A lot of time, you know, he's worked very hard, he always on his feet. So sometimes he sit down and become relaxed. Sometimes he'll be playing the guitar, and he's like strumming on the guitar, and we as kids would laugh. My dad would play the guitar and sleeping. <laughs> Um, sometimes my dad would show me like in his olden days, like how he would drop food. Drop food, he mean like dance. So he would go and dance. Oh, you know, people don't know to, how, how to dance. Let me show you how we used to drop food in my days. <laughs> he, he had a great sense of humor as well. And all the young people love him and love to be around my dad. I don't know, there is something about him that young people just love. He just, I don't know, like a magnet. He just hold them to him. Herbert was very Herbert was a very good barber. So I think Gary has read, read a lot of stuff on my paper. <laughs> so, and he was very good with the pair of scissors and comb and razor. Back to school, Sunday afternoon, most of the men and boys around the community would come and get a shave or a haircut. And this was always free. He never tried a cent in doing that. Um, going to school, we were kept in line because most of our teachers from the other primary are uh, not called by my dad. Uh, Mr. Morgan, Mr. Do Ms. Dwyer, Ms. Callan, everybody known the postman from Rockville. So we have to be on our big toes. So my dad never have to come to school for any of us to be in trouble because they know all the teachers know my dad. He taught us many life skills, hard work, honesty, sharing, looking out for each other, self-worth, respect, social graces that a lot of people don't know what we generally call it manners. Kids must have manners and respect for the elder. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Right? Everybody is miss or auntie or uncle. Teachers have respect for the elders. I remember my dad coming from work in the evening, so the evening, he always would draw some stuff of food in his pocket. Like cosmic jar, ice cream, and those, those sweets with the caramel in the middle. I don't remember what that was, but those were really good. But one of my sister, my dad always have to take for my sister, Vita. This is Vita. My, if my dad didn't take from any of us, we would have to take from Vita. But we are just confident that my dad is breaking our bar because if he don't have to give us, he have to give Vita. Yeah. <laughs> my dad would go the extra man to protect his children. You would wonder how he did it with a man with an army of them. I remember one of my sisters went out with some friends and they never returned for days. And my dad didn't stop at the final. He even go into the police station to report it. Because it was determined for her to come down. I'm not calling any names, please. <laughs> I also remember one of my brothers who got stuck in a foreign country. I know he knows himself, but I won't say where. And my dad heard about it and said, like, you know, I can be a conductor with my son. I don't know what is wrong with him. And he buys a pen ticket and sends you and then he him to bring him back home. And, and I look at all those characters with his dad, a priest, a protector, a provider, a friend. I, I don't know. It's, there's so much things I want to say about my dad. Can not allow me, but I'll, I'll move on. My proudest moment when I graduated from Rena Ruby Art Institute was held at the Renaissance to make a grant. You might have a different name now, I'm not sure. My dad and my stepmom came up with my siblings and some of my other church family. And when my name was called for my award, I could see how proud he was of me. And uh, 
So we're gonna have to break the screen a little bit. I could remember another funny thing. <laughs> my dad as well. I don't know, but that might seem to me the amazed when I was so small and I have such a good memory. Because I think I may be about four years old. And my dad was, my brother Skinner had a pig and he had some colors. I remember they called it calico or stripes, like spotted pig. And my dad was butchering the pig. And I don't know what happened through that process. But he pushed the knife in the throat, and the pig got up and ran. And they were running all over the yard. <laughs> 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 so funny. Uh, uh, my dad was a very, very, very generous man. I don't have a lot of money, but he still finds stuff to give away. I, I could remember most times, like, he usually have a lot of cows in the morning, so we have three cows, maybe five cows. And that is, a lot of us, we just couldn't drunk all the milk with a spoon. So we send a month, a drug, a bottle for the blind lady who lived across so, from us. And we used to call a lady, Gang Gang, Lady Gang Gang Gang. And there was two other old ladies, they were sisters. They were, living, they were living down the road. I don't know if I had a cook with my nana. I miss eating things with like a lot of potato. And if you're gold going in there, bro, nana would catch it and tie it and wait here with the machete. Machete. And say, come with my cake. <laughs> so my dad would also like, when he came over to a port, I must say the other day we have something to kill. And then we send like a leg and a piece of meat. So, Papa was a very active member of the New Testament Church of God, and he served on the deacon board for many years. A couple years ago, I was talking to him, and he told me that, you know what, I, I'm just feeling pain around my back, and I can't really walk to church and play on my legs. But he had this guitar, and he wanted to give it to someone who he wanted to play, but he had to play in the church, nothing else. His guitar must only play in the church. <laughs> but on April 17, my dad drew his last breath to be with his maker. He was only 19, 94 years old, rather. Herbert survived by his widow, wife, Bertina Lewis. My name is Blanche. Sons, Alves, Aaron, Stennett, Altiman, Wilford, Eric, Robert, Sigrid, Alvin, Ernest, Ansel, Horace, yes, truly. Daughters, Maureen, Levita, Lorraine, Lynette, which is not deceased. Four stepson, one step daughters, daughter rather. My father and my woman to grandchildren. So far as I was finding was 49 grandchildren, 52 great grandchildren, and two great great grandchildren. Two sisters, step grandchildren, and other relatives and friends. The world is a sadder place without Herbert. Papa, Mars Pussy, Mount Earth early in our lives. But Papa touched each of us and left, left us with memories we will cherish forever. I miss you, Papa. I love you, Dad, and you forever be my hero. God loves you, and now you are home. I'll see you someday. Thank you, Papa. And to my family, Luke 1 verse 37 says, For with God, nothing is impossible. If we are, as a family, can put our trust in God, we will get through anything. While on the right, it is, oh, sorry, while on the right, it is called life, you must take the good with the bad. Smile when you are sad, love when you've got what you got and remember what you have. Always forget. 
for if you don't forgive, it's very dangerous. You're keeping yourself in bondage. Yes? When you forgive, it's freedom. You lose that person and you lose yourself. My dad generally found that. But never forget, learn from your mistakes. Don't worry about making mistakes. Mistakes is different for you to learn, strong, and build up a good backbone. But never regret them. People change, things go wrong. Just remember, the rise goes on. I love you guys, and I love you, Papa. Thank you. Thank you so much. As I was sitting there, I was thinking that and some people haven't left this community, some of Brother Bernard's community and, and family, he will have a village all by himself. Yes. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And I just want to encourage, especially those who are in the family, who have not known the Lord, seek him. So that when the trumpet shall sound, you will not be going searching for Brother Bernard, but you will meet him face to face. Amen? Amen. At this time, we'll be having the family prayer. Is Pastor Miles here? Okay, Pastor Miles will be coming at this time to do the family prayer. So as he's coming, I'm going to ask the congregation to stand where the family member be seated. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within. Bless his holy name. Indeed, it's a great honor to be here today. Praise God to pray for the family. There's so much has been said about Posey. And I recognize that they are many a little impatient. So I'm not going to be long. So this time I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me. Almighty God, in the precious name of your Son Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, you are the one who gives life, and you take it away. You are the potter, and we are the clay. Father, I place the Bernard family in your hands this moment. Lord, many of you with a broken heart, but I know, God, that you have the remedy. Father, pray, God, that you will grant strength. Your God, your fear is weakness. Your word declare, O God, that let the weak say, I am strong. And so, Lord, I pray, God, for the wife. I pray, God, for the sons and daughters, grandchildren. Lord, as they go through this time of their bereavement, God, they will allow, you will allow them to know that you are the light. Lord, many times there is a way that seems right unto the man, but the end is dead. I pray to the God for those who have not yet said yes to you, Lord. God, they believe and they know that there is a God, but Lord, they have not surrendered their lives to thee. I pray, God, they will emulate the life of their father, today and lord from today on all you will say lord i'm willing to follow you god i pray you will cover them with your divine covering that god no weapon that ever form against them will ever prosper god i pray that your special anointing will rest upon them and god he said that they take hallelujah you will go before you will leave the way touch them in the name of jesus i pray god i ask of you lord jesus that your divine presence Oh God, we overshadow them. May the trouble, oh God, from a foreign land to be here, God, is all because of your grace and your mercy. Father, I place me in your hand one more time. I know that you are able to do it, see them, God, abundantly more than what we may ask or think. And I pray in blessing you with blessing, oh God. I say thanks. I say thanks in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. We will be going to the burial spot in a minute or two. But there is a recessional hymn on your program. I will be calling the pole bearers. 
and you have been a wonderful group. Please don't mess it up now. Please don't mess it up now. We'll be singing the hymn when we get to the second stanza. I will ask the Paul Bearers to come. The, myself and um, the moderator will be leaving. Then the casket will go out, followed by the family and then the rest of the person. You have been a wonderful set. Keep it up. So stand with me, everybody. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, we prepare for us a place when we all Thank mm -hmm. you. 
to burst the tomb and come forth. Well, until then, God, we ask, oh God, that you keep him and that God, you protect and preserve, oh God Almighty, his memory in the hearts and in the lives of your people. Lord, I pray, God Almighty, that someone will rise up to be an example, oh God Almighty, of their grandfather, of their father, oh God Almighty, who have impacted their life, oh God Almighty, in a wonderful way. Lord, we say thanks for your guidance. We say thanks for your protection as we will be commencing, oh God Almighty, this final segment of our service today. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Lift. Lift. Oh, okay. Stop it, stop it. Release, take it, release, stop it. Release, take it, release, stop it. Release, take it, release, stop Come down, come down. Come down, come down. Come down, come down. Come 
So you know how that goes. So I say thank you. And on behalf of the family, I want to say thank you for coming to support them in their time of bereavement. To the workmen, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And as they have